All right. Thank you, everybody, again, for joining us. Um, I have, uh, if any of you out there have great tips on how to uh, go from Zoom to Facebook and do this completely seamlessly where I'm on, <laughs> um, that would be great. But we are live here with Wang Yip. Thank you so much for coming uh, to chat with us today. Uh, for those of you that haven't tuned in before, welcome. Uh, we just launched our it's called the Expand Issue for Moments Magazine, um, number nine. So for any of you that haven't been following Moments Magazine before, um, one of the things I love about Moments is that all of our issues are evergreen. And that means that they are good anytime for any event, for anybody planning any kind of an event. And the content in it, um, yes, we're from Calgary, I'm based out of Calgary, but it is good for anywhere in the world. Because if you're talking design, if you're talking AV, if you're talking about um, mental wellness, anything that you need to know as an event planner, we are hitting those topics every single time. Um, and we would love for you to read online. Feel free to um, link through as we're chatting. We're gonna be together with Wang here for about 20 minutes, half an hour, have a great chat today about expand, but take a look at Moments Magazine. It is at candyconsulting.ca slash moments dash magazine. So welcome Wang, <laughs> thank you thank so you. much for being here today. Um, your article that you were able to submit, it, it's actually an excerpt from a book that you just released. Mm -hmm. um, so what a, what a great thing. And I was joking a little bit before we were um, on live here that we actually haven't talked face to face. We've no, had a lot of haven't. emails and a lot of exchanges. Um, but the cool thing about where we're at in, in today's world um, is that it really doesn't matter how you're connecting right. with people. The point is that we are staying connected. So I so appreciate that you're with us today. Um, tell us a little bit about you and the work that you do. I know you've got a laundry list of amazing thing you've, things you've done in the past, <laughs> uh, besides being an author. So tell us a little bit about you and, and what you're up to these days. Sure, yeah, I, I wouldn't, uh, I would humbly say that I don't have a long list of accomplishments and, and things like that, <laughs> but uh, um, basically, <clears throat> Um, yeah, I've been, so my most recent uh, project, as you know, is, is Essential Habits, and uh, it's my sixth book that I've self-published, and my other five books that I self-published were all on public speaking. Um, so I'm really, I guess, really interested, in, and a lot of my work as a management consultant and some of my previous jobs is really just to take information and make it accessible, make it easy to understand, make it easy to take action on uh, and, and apply to your life. And so um, a lot of my work either through the books or through management consulting has really been about making it easy uh, for mm. people to take action. So yes, yeah, so, yeah. so that's kind of what uh, I'm all about. It really is. And that's kind of my, I, I would say if I, if I ask my friends and if you ask my friends, that's kind of my superpower to really take information and make it really easy and accessible to others. And, and honestly, like reading through your book, um, there were so many examples of application. Mm -hmm. So I think sometimes um, some of us, like I, I'm a dreamer, I'm a visionary, I love all sorts of creative pursuits. And, and it is one of those things that I love about events. I've been planning events forever. And I found that there's this, um, I, I, I was joking with somebody in, in one of our strat sessions just this last week, how my mom and dad, my mom used to talk about how she was the visionary and, and she always made everything happen. And she was always sort of five steps ahead. Um, and, and she loved that unknown, like just go into the unknown. And then there's my dad who was really, um, practical and made sure everything right. was, you know, it's a step by step by step. And as kids, I know that we had to log um, when we'd fill in for gas, there was always the log that you had to fill out first and very methodical. And she said that being yoked together sometimes was difficult um, mm. where you've got this vision and, and something you want to get done. But at the same time, there's this method and a process and, and getting things sort of now to practicality um, so that you can see things happen. And, and the cool thing about sort of that beautiful relationship that they had all those years was that 
it was both and. And I think as event planners, sometimes we're in that space where we are running and we're, and we're seeking the vision and we're moving forward and, and we can see something pretty grand that a lot of our clients or, or even the events that we're planning, um, others may not see the whole picture yet, but we get it. Um, but then there's these step by step. And I think when I read your book, um, and I'd love to hear more sort of your method in putting the book together because mm -hmm. you have several essential habits, not just one. We, we highlight gratitude in the, in the magazine, but um, what is it about essential habits um, that isn't just about going through the motions? Like, why do you think it's so important for people to set really key habits in their life, especially people like um, event planners where, where we're looking at this really grand picture and, and, and you do have to keep that in mind, but what, why, do, um, why do we need to really be setting these daily habits so that we, uh, I don't know, maybe reach the goal or, or manage our daily lives? Could you talk, tell a little more yeah. about where that came from for you? Absolutely. So let me just start with how Essential Habits came about, and then I'll, I'll link it to kind of event planning. So essentially, uh, Essential Habits came out of uh, a lot of my research, a lot of my reading. Uh, I've been, I, I'm basically a nonfiction book fiend. So mm -hmm. I, I read almost every day. I, you know, I look at courses, I listen to audiobooks, I listen to podcasts, and all of these things, just, you know, I, and I take really, really uh, excessive notes, uh, some would say, and all of these things kind of came together. And I thought, how can I, you know, I mean, it's great to read, you know, and brag that I read 50 books or hundred books or even 200 books a year, but what does it actually really mean to someone mm -hmm. that you read a hundred books? Right. And so my, my wife was kind of telling me, Hey, you know, you read all these books, but you actually haven't really done anything with it. Right. You haven't really learned anything or, you know, adopted it into your life and and I thought about that and I thought yeah that that's that's kind of right so <laughs> essential habits was really you're probably not alone in that either yeah. actually I'll, I'll say <laughs> yeah exactly so so what I did was I started reading all of these things I started taking notes but then I didn't really take action so essential habits was really a way of of kind of being accountable to myself in a way so I have all these notes I have these things and I thought well all of these successful people, entrepreneurs, business leaders, uh, athletes, they say that these are the morning routines or the morning habits that they partake in. And so I started doing it myself. So I started waking up early. I started exercising. I started journaling. I started trying all these things to see what kind of impact it would have on my life. And I found that uh, just like they said, it, it had you know, different ways of, of affecting my life, but definitely in positive ways. And so... Um, essential habits is really, you know, um, it came out of that experimentation, but it also came out of the fact that I read all of these nonfiction books and sometimes, and I'm not sure if you have this feeling, Lisa, but sometimes you read, you know, a 200, 300 page book, but you really only get like one kind of key takeaway, right? <laughs> like a book about meditation, it kind of just says you should meditate. And I didn't <laughs> want to read 300 pages of a book with all the research and all the articles and, mm. and anecdotes and all the studies to say, Hey, you should just meditate in the morning. Right. Like I just want that kind of one statement that says you should meditate in the morning and skip all of that <laughs> research. And, um, and so, uh, my book kind of came about because I wanted just to distill all of these kind of key and, you know, I, I, I don't coin the phrase myself, but I call it like a directive. Um, mm. something that basically tells you what you should be doing. If you mm -hmm. kind of believe in the fact that I've done my research well, and you know I'm citing all of these different books and, and studies and authors and things like that, and they've already done all of the research that you need to know that meditation is the right thing to do, mm. then I can just be the one that says, hey, you know, this book, this author that you already know that has already done all the research and all the, all the studies and things like that says that meditation is something that you should be doing, right? And, mm -hmm. and so I just leave it at that. And so my book is kind of a distillation of all of those things. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, looking back to event planning, I started thinking about how does expand and habits and things like that kind of all link together. And so I, I kind of see it in, in, I guess, two ways, and maybe there's more, but these are the two that I kind of think of. So the one thing is, um, so in terms of expand and event planning and 
um, habits, one, one way is just really managing the stress. And uh, one of the jobs that I had really way back in the past, right after university, I was um, an orientations coordinator. And so I planned out the first day for all first years coming into university. And I thought back that, that's about like that. wearing stress on your back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I thought about I thought about <laughs> that. And again, like you said, it's very, very stressful. And basically, we took I think it was like six months to plan the one day. Yeah. And there were so many different things that happened in that one day, right? And, and I'm not saying that I'm an event planner. I'm not saying that, you know, that's probably similar to uh, other events, but I, I can, I think I can yep. safely say that I understand how to plan really big events. And there's a lot of small things that happen and you can even plan out everything in advance uh, minute by minute, but still have things go wrong or out of place or, you know, you have to problem solve on the day of. And so having all of that stress is, is not very good, but the way to deal with that stress is kind of grounding yourself in these habits. And so essential habits, uh, you know, morning habits, nighttime habits, things like that, they really give you a foundation for you to really plan your day, manage your energy, uh, manage your stress. And I mean, the topic in the article that I wrote uh, in that expanded show around gratitude, um, one of the ways is really just kind of uh, why you should have gratitude in your life is to manage the stress, right? Is mm. um, if you're grateful for things, if you see the positivity, in your your daily kind of events, um, you're going to manage or be better able to manage your stress that you have in your life. Mm -hmm. And um, the other thing that I talk about, so the second item is really just um, around expanding. I, I, I see kind of um, uh, essential habits and things like that as a way to um, really add value to your clients, to your customers. Um, one of the habits that I talk about is around creativity, for instance, and mm -hmm. how to cultivate that, uh, uh, as James Altucher, one of my favorite authors says, uh, that idea muscle that you have. And so during this time, um, of course, events are, are being disrupted. They're no longer maybe being held in person or as big or, or uh, maybe events are being canceled. So for event planners, it's super important to just really understand how our what are the different ways that I can add additional value to my clients, to my customers? Um, mm -hmm. So one example, for instance, that I've seen um, through my own life is I uh, subscribe to uh, like a newsletter service and they also sell uh, online courses and other products and things like that. Um, but one of the things that they offered um, was a $1,000 credit to just um, you know get reimbursed on any, any of their products or any of the services that, that we buy. So. In the future, if I buy, let's say, a $2,000 course, I can email support and say, hey, I want to get reimbursed $1,000, and I'll refund the $1,000 back. And it's just a way to, to kind of almost incentivize customers, but also to, mm -hmm. to give them a little bit of, um, I guess, value for being loyal to kind of the, the products or the services that you already have. And, mm -hmm. and uh, I mean, I, I'm, not a, I'm not a business person or anything like that, but I know that's you know, your existing customers are probably um, better customers for you than trying to get new customers, right? And so during this time, um, what are the kind of different ways that event planners can work with existing customers to kind of provide or add additional value or mm -hmm. products or services or things like that to them, right? If maybe it's through uh, something like a discount or something like a reimbursement for future services. Maybe it's additional ways. Um, uh, another way that I uh, saw and sorry to kind of uh, no, get good. this uh, so long is uh, I, I saw um, I saw one event planner thinking about uh, basically he was he was being asked to um, live stream different events so for weddings and things like that and he was uh, excuse me he was asked to live stream those events because of friends and family and basically the friends and family couldn't travel in because mm -hmm. of COVID. And so uh, there was a wedding happening and, and they knew that he was tech savvy. So they asked him, hey, can you like set up a camera? Can you set up a laptop? Can you just live stream the event so that people that couldn't fly in can watch and, and see this, these uh, events live, right? And it's almost as if they're there, um, mm -hmm. but also social distancing and things like that. 
And uh, so he set that up, but he also saw that there was an opportunity there for other event planners to kind of do similar things. Maybe that's another value add service, right? And so you plan these events. And then on top of that, uh, if you're tech savvy, if you've got a web camera or a, a nice camera and you can set up that live stream, maybe that's an, another additional value add, right? That, that, mm -hmm. uh, that wouldn't come about from obviously kind of outside of COVID, right? And so yeah. it's because of COVID that you have these additional services that you can then add. And then even after COVID, you can still continue to have that service. Well, and, and what you're saying, I, I think what one of the, the biggest points that I'm taking from what you're saying as well is, is the idea of being seen. Mm -hmm. um, when I started working on, on the expand issue and really looking at what does it mean? Like, it, well, that was actually like December, January, and I was really thrilled about this, this idea of expanding this year and clarity 2020, everybody's doing something right. about vision or clarity. Um, and the idea though, of, um, contracting and almost feeling like you're unseen. Um, for a lot of those of you that are planning events and, and you're working with um, your team and you're doing, wanting to do team building, or maybe you've got uh, people that you're bring, you were supposed to be bringing in from all over the world. I know that we have people that we work with that, that um, when an event is canceled and your ticket is canceled or postponed, where are all of those guests? Usually they're just at home trying to figure mm -hmm. out what, what to do with your kids while they're home. You know, they should be in school, but now they're home. So everything, it was turned on its head. And this idea of um, really allowing ourselves um, to put ourselves out there, that's one thing. So right. like you're saying, thinking creatively and not getting stuck in that moment of, of isolation or, or um contraction that's sort of the word that keeps coming in my mm. head is is we were contracting so so um almost severely because the industry just kind of shut down um but the other part of that is is in looking at um in looking at the people around us and the ones that would have come to our event exactly what you're talking about is about showing them that they're seen Mm -hmm. So um, if there is a way we can communicate, I know a lot of people are using Zoom and there's all sorts of different um, video conferencing type of platforms now. There's a lot more going on. Some people see it as noise, uh, the things that are going on, um, social media channels and everybody's online. And, and sometimes that, that noise just gets a little bit much. But at the same time, I really honor the people that are out there trying to do something um, to speak to the, their customers or their donors or the people that would have come to their events, that there are still connecting opportunities that can happen. And, and in that action, you're actually showing the gratitude for maybe they've been with you a long time. Maybe you were trying to uh, run a fundraising event in April or May and, and that didn't happen and you were still making the ask and they still showed up. And so this idea of really having gratitude for the people that show up for your events consistently or for your company, if, if you continue to launch new products and somehow they're still there, um, that I think when, when I read that chapter on gratitude from your book, Wang, it was, it was so aligned completely with this space of um, we might feel like we need to just hold back and not do anything. And um, instead of putting ourselves mm -hmm. out there and showing mm -hmm. our gratitude for others. Um, I think sometimes we get in our own head and we feel like um, we need to be taken care of. But if you are truly a leader in the work that you do, um, there is that expectation, I think, and a responsibility that we are showing up and showing the gratitude that we have. And there is this exchange. That's the cool thing is as you show gratitude, you're going to um, receive that back. Right. Um, so what was it specifically? Are there ways that you um, show up and uh, show gratitude in your own life or, or that things are showing up for you these days? Yeah, I, I would say that I'm in the kind of beginning part of the journey right now, because mm -hmm. after I, I self-published the book, I've, I've started to kind of get it out there and try to, as you said, be seen. Um, so I've tried to just give away basically as many copies of my books as I, as I can to, to friends and to coworkers and to, to anybody that uh, is interested. And, um, you know, I, I don't know how 
all of that will come back to me and I don't think I've seen anything, but you know, I just, I trust in the process. Like you said, I trust that uh, by giving away as much as I can, I'll, I'll at some point later on receive. And I, I don't, at the same time, I don't give so that I can receive. I just, I give away with the expectation that, you know, it's, it, it'll help people. Um, people would hopefully enjoy my work. And if they enjoy my work, they'll kind of give back by sharing with others. Right. And so that, that's awesome. kind of what I've been doing in my life. So, with, so with do you, yeah. um, do you do any coaching or consulting around habits? Like, would that be something that you would be open to phone calls or if people wanted to have that discussion or, or, um, purchase, which they could, that'd be a way of giving back to you, um, purchase a copy of your book and then have that dialogue around how for themselves, how do they start to create better habits and more positive habits in their life? Is that something that you currently do or would be willing to do? Yeah, I, I, I don't currently offer that as a, as a service. I, I guess I don't consider maybe let's call it a conversation. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, I don't consider myself an expert in, in habits, but uh, I, I think if I mean, I'm, I'm open to doing coaching and consulting if, uh, if people are <laughs> I just interested. totally in put you right on the spot. But I <laughs> no, no, not having at all. read the book, I really believe that there sometimes it's about people verbalizing, right? Like, mm, it, it's mm -hmm. just about having a conversation on on where I feel stuck. And because of your massive knowledge and all these books that you've read, and, and you're able to impart maybe some of that wisdom, or you can lead them to the right direction, you know, uh, a certain either habit or, or an author that would be great to explore. Um, we are going to put a few um, links in the bottom here for all of you that are really curious about the book or, or what Wang's up to. Um, but also, I would say if you've got any suggestions, Wang, let's add those in for um, maybe places or websites that you guys can be searching for what does it mean? And I really appreciate uh, your honesty and, and being vulnerable with us too, that when your wife said, and I'm, and, and the fact that, that you just took that in where she said, you know, you've read all these books, but have you put been putting any of them into mm. action? And for um, a lot of us in the magazine, actually, we feature your book in Lisa's library because I, I now have read it digitally, which I is saw that, yeah. great. And so I can't put it physically in my, bookshelf but it's certainly in my bookshelf in my head um, but I also have hundreds of books and it's one of those things that it is a challenge so if mm -hmm. you've got books that you've been reading um, any one of you um, and it actually doesn't even matter the topic but if you pull a couple of those books off the shelf and if you ask that hard question have I been putting those things into action um, and challenge yourself like this fall is such a beautiful time to take ourselves back to school and to start to work on some of those things and Ed Wang actually in this issue this is the first time I've done a couple of um, worksheets in the past with a couple of the issues okay. um, but this time there's a six page workbook right in the moments magazine and it's free for all of you to download um, but it actually is your sweet september strategy and it talks about all these areas of your life that um where are you at today and where do you want to be in a month from now um that would be a really great chance for you to take a look at what are those topics that are really relevant for you right now maybe they're resonating um it might be work related family related there might be things that you guys all are um we're seeing trends for sure on what people are trying to work on right now. Um, but there might be things for you that this is your time. This could be your month. Mm -hmm. So use September as a uh, take yourself back to school um, and read Wang's book. Because when you start to look at what does it mean to set a goal, um, for any of us that have tried to meet that goal, like you say, there's still going to be fires to put out and things mm -hmm. that, that we have to somehow manage around or figure out, you know, what's next. Um, but the idea of habits can be so important for all of us that we actually see um, some kind of shift or change that has happened over the course of a week, two weeks, <clears throat> right through to the end of the month. Um, what a gift it is to yourself to take those things really seriously and put them in action. Um, we will add some links for sure. So when they can reach you, where can they reach you? Yeah, so they can find me on LinkedIn. They can find me, uh, I write on Medium. So I'm at Wang Yip, I think on Medium. Um, so I write okay. there and I've, 
I've uh, recently tried to just basically expand my my writing a little bit. I, I used to write Fantastic. maybe twice a week, uh, and I've been okay. writing twice a week for I think about two years now. And now I write five times a week. So I'm just trying to, wow. yeah, I'm just trying to basically level up and try to be much better at writing, even though I've written you know, six books. So uh, yeah, and um, if they if they want to connect with me, uh, LinkedIn and and uh, Medium are probably the best places. Awesome. Well, before I ask you for your final tip, uh, we've got mm -hmm. just a couple of minutes left, but I, I want to have you leave everybody with something that you would love for them to remember in the next week or two here. Um, but I want to show you something. Okay. So I, I went to visit a friend. Um, are you familiar with Bankers Hall? So for uh, those yep. of you that don't, you're, you're based in Edmonton. Calgary. I am, yes, yes. Okay. But so I've been downtown to Calgary. Calgary. Many times. Okay. So there's yeah. a place yeah. called Bankers Hall hall third floor there's this great space it's a uh, happiness experience center okay. uh, run by someone named karen judge and i was there this last week and as i was leaving one of her artists passed me this and wow. it is a gratitude wand um and i i was just like i had it on the table here today i'm actually at home today um but if you guys can see this this artist actually wraps twigs and branches and in this case for kids, a little wand. And so she passed me this gratitude wand and she said to encourage people um, to say what they're grateful for. Mm. Um, and you would pass the wand around the table. And it's such a beautiful, simple expression of for all of us that there's always something to be thankful for. Um, my dad used to use beans, five beans, and I used to carry them in my pocket. And then I'd, I'd have to, when I felt the beans, I'd have to think of five things wow. <laughs> that I That's was cool. grateful for. But I wanted to show you this because this came out of challenging times for this artist where she just started wrapping and wrapping and she's got really amazing. Like you can actually have a whole tree wrapped <laughs> oh, wow. with this yarn. And it is really beautiful for those of you that are in Calgary. Um, talk to Karen. I'm sure she'll get you set up with one of these, or if you wanted a full branch and you'll actually behind me is art from Dean Stanton here in Calgary. You'll see a lot of Dean's work in her space mm -hmm. as well. Um, but I wanted to show you this Wang, because I think sometimes we think habits can be, very complicated or we have to change our life or we've mm -hmm. got to adjust everything to kind of get ourselves in that headspace when it might just take one simple action or a simple word or something about um, just thinking about one thing that you're grateful for. for today mm -hmm. I'm grateful for the sunshine coming in uh, we've got a sunny day here in Calgary um, so wanted to leave that with everybody as well. Think of one thing. And if you want to add that into the chat box, I'm sure that will be an encouragement to everybody as well today. Um, what would you like to leave with us? What do you have uh, maybe a, a word of encouragement or advice for us as we move forward and try to create better habits and more positive habits in our life? Yeah, I, I will refer to a book that I'm reading as, as I do always. Um, there's a book <laughs> by BJ Fogg. Um, he's a Stanford researcher and he wrote a, a book and he actually has a free email course um, of the same name, I think. Uh, it's called Tiny Habits. And um, it's kind of how I almost got started with kind of changing some of my life. Um, but in his book, Tiny Habits, he kind of talks about something really interesting. Um, habits are a way to change your life, but you don't want to adopt things that you really don't want to do, right? So like, let's say, one habit that you want to take on is waking up at 4.30 a.m., but you're really not a morning person. You're, you know, you, you like to stay up late at night. You like to work at night. Uh, you mm -hmm. like to exercise at night. You like to do things at night. Um, don't, <laughs> don't do things that you have to force yourself to do because they aren't going to become habits, mm -hmm. right? And so what you want to do is you want to seek out things that have a really high impact on your life. Um, so maybe it's not waking up at 4.30, but maybe waking up at 8.00 also the things that you really want to, to actually do because if you can find things that have a high impact on your life and the things that you really actually want to do and you have the motivation to do them you're more likely to do those things and and those things then become habits and so um if you want to be for instance let's just take the example of, of gratitude um uh, you know my my like lofty suggestion would be to kind of write a journal and every single day you know take 
30 minutes, take 10 minutes, whatever it is to write a journal. But that's probably too big of a goal for most people that have, have never written before, right? Or have never kept a journal mm -hmm. before. So here's what I would do instead. And here's like kind of the tiniest habit that you can take on. Um, if you really want to be grateful, just think of three things in the morning, you know, once you wake up or maybe as you're brushing your teeth, think of three things that you're really grateful for and make sure that one of those items, and this is advice from Tony Robbins, who kind of does the, has the same practice of gratitude. He always thinks of one small thing to be grateful of because um, you can be grateful for, you know, you know, love and family and, and, you know, having a house over here over your head and you know having a job and things like that. those are kind of the big things but oftentimes we often forget about some of the smaller things in life so you know one one example from his life would be like thank goodness that i have this pencil right that i can write some of these these uh, journal entries from or thank mm -hmm. goodness that you know i've got this uh, i've got you know two pairs of socks right and so he kind of it dedicates one gratitude item into some of the smaller things in life so he just doesn't forget about some of the smaller things. So that's kind of the, the key takeaway. If you really want to adopt that habit of gratitude, just think of three things. Uh, you don't have to write them down and make sure that one of those items is just something small in your life. Mm -hmm. So Love it. And I think the idea of writing something down, even if you're not familiar with journaling, um, mm -hmm. sometimes it's actually in uh, in a notebook where I'm doing um, just notes for the day or my to-do list. And it might just be in the margin or in the corner and, mm -hmm. and either, either writing it down or verbalizing with somebody and, and just uh, sharing your gratitude for something. Um, there, it, it kind of works on your brain over time where, where it just becomes a little more um, as a go-to habit, like you're mm -hmm. saying, where you might surprise yourself where you're, um, in your mind kind of thinking of the things that you're grateful for without even really having to deliberately go there intentionally go there um so thank you so much for the chat today i so appreciate your time and uh and for allowing us to put an excerpt in the latest issue of moments um for any of you that haven't had a chance to read you can read this all over the world we've actually had some great uh feedback from all over the world now um if you want to read it's free which is for me, um, really important. That's our gift to you. Um, and there is no sign in or sign up. You just go online, uh, read. And it, this is the first time that we've made all of our issues downloadable. Um, I am on a mission <laughs> right now that anybody planning any kind of events anywhere has the resources, support, and, um, and services that they need to really move forward and do this well. Um, I've been planning events for 30 something years now. Wow. Um, and for me, I was, I was, um, it's a whole other show, but, <laughs> but mm -hmm. I was pretty burnt out in my early twenties. And, and I decided back then that I am in this for the long haul. And that means that we have to take care of ourselves. We have to take care of each other. And so I, I so appreciate people like yourself, Wang, that are putting things out there that help us uh, do better, be better. If you want to read moments, it's at candyconsulting.ca slash moments dash magazine. All of the issues are there. Um, you can link through its issue is our platform so you can download from issue. Uh, but thank you so much again. And we will be back with a few more of our moments contributors coming up in the next few days to come. Uh, but in the meantime, have a good read of uh, the habit of gratitude. <laughs> and we will talk to you again, Wang, real soon. Great. Thank you, Lisa. All right. Take care. Bye.